your media where you are. podcast network that meets you where you are when you need it at your time in your space when you feel like it you come first your media where you are with every moment you are creating an impression make sure it's an impression by design this is the transcript with siamo It's a chilly Thursday afternoon, right, Chain Joburg. Welcome to the transcript with me, Tsiamo Desane. For those of you who are joining us via our Facebook and YouTube pages, welcome to the transcript. Today's conversation, I'm glad to have with um, someone who I think has a beautiful story, very, very, very colorful one. Um, I, while doing some research, I discovered a few things about this person that I thought, you know, were just remarkable. So um, without further ado, I'm going to introduce my guest for today. We are discussing the spirit of resilience. And my guest for today is, I don't, do I refer to you as Alex or Alessandro? Alex is better. I prefer Alex. Alex is more friendly. <laughs> Alessandro is very formal. I didn't even know. Like you are a whole Aless- I was like, Alessandro. I like to surprise y'all. I prefer Alex because then Alessandro people ask a lot of questions about which are unnecessarily asked. But mm-hmm. Alex, Alex is good. I'm the people's champ. So just to start there, I just wanted to find out, were you, are you called, did you get your name because of the move to Italy or were you literally? Because of the move to Italy. Okay. Because of the move to Italy. Um, um, I was a diplomat son, and obviously mm-hmm. Alex. My full name was Alexander, which was converted to Alessandro because yes. I was in Rome. Uh-huh. Um, but my certain name is Musupi, which I honestly love. Um, and if people call me Musupi, I'll definitely answer. I actually prefer Musupi more than anything else. That's something because I was also that's the name like, you know. Tiana. Yes, yeah. yes. So my, I was my just close like... friends know Musupi. My family members know Musupi. I enjoy Musupi personally. Um, okay. So yeah. Welcome. So, how are you? I'm all good. What's good with you, Tiam? I'm good. Thank you. I didn't even thank know you, you had for a radio station. Yeah, huh? I didn't know you had a podcast. There's a lot I don't know about you. Clearly, hey. clearly. Hey, all, right, right. Right. Hey, we'll That's it. all the time. You come have a great meal, dance like a champion in the middle of the restaurant. Yeah, but we, it's, it's no. not about you. Can't. Oh, oh you can't touch you? me in my studio. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's about me. My bad. My yeah. bad. Cool. So I think let's um, let's start from the beginning. Uh-huh. I mean, I found out that you're actually a diplomat's son mm-hmm. and you're one of six kids. I'm the last born of six kids. The last born of six kids. That's why I'm so problematic. 100%. It makes sense to me. I don't know why people are confused about it. To me, <laughs> no, it does. Now that I know, I'm just like, actually, everything you're doing is within rights. Within the rights, you're last born. <laughs> That's why I'm the way I am. <laughs> and if you meet the rest of my family obviously you know big baby gp mm-hmm. once you meet him you understand why i'm the way i am <laughs> just, I, I was taught by him to be this person i'm just I, like i sat down and i was while doing my research i'm yeah. just like it all makes sense yeah. like this is it's all just coming together uh-huh. well but now i want to take start from the and create context you're born in the free state and uh-huh. then at six months i think you yeah. moved to italy italy uh-huh. How and and for you, Italy is home. That's what you know. No, to be honest, uh-huh. I, it's like I always tell people. I I got back when I was twelve. So yeah. between the ages of zero and twelve, what do you really do? You go to school. You come back. You go on school trips. You come back. You go to a friend's house. You come back home. Yeah. Um. The only advantage and uh thing I learned in Italy was a, um, the language, obviously, mm-hmm. um, and two is Italian. But I always say I think. I'm most I'm South African. Like everything I, I, I got to do on my own as an adult, I did here. Mm-hmm. But um, what I'm saying is for you, Italy was home for 12 home, years. Yeah. Yeah, that for 12 you, years. Yeah. You didn't know I didn't know anywhere else. But we used to come home. We used to come home to Lesotho in South Africa all the every 
once or twice a year. Okay. Um, June holidays, we're always here. Um, December, Christmas, we used to always come back, hang out with Granny. Um, so, yeah, I lived there for 12 years, but South African so too. And how was that? Like, how was the, um, you know, the life they, and, and adjusting to the transition of, of just coming back to South Africa? Um, life in Italy was actually quite fun. Um, and I'll always go back to the fact that for me, it was like any other 12 year old, any other kid that is 12 between the ages of zero and 12, mm -hmm. you, all you want to do is go to a friend's house. You want to go to school, come back from school. You go back to your friend's house. Um, the only thing I learned was a different language. Um, Italians are very much like South Africans. They're very family orientated. Um, they love their food. They love entertaining. Um, so Italians and South Africans have a lot in common, a lot in common. So it's, for me, it was, was, was a pretty easy transition when we got back. Um, cause at the age of 12, the only thing you got to worry about is your mates at school. And when I first got back, I couldn't speak Sutu, but I could understand it because my mom and dad spoke Sutu to us all the time. That's, I, that's, that's what I wanted to ask. Yeah. Could you speak? No, I couldn't speak, speak it. Proper fluency Sutu. Like, <laughs> like you Sutu go originally now. <laughs> No, no, there's no more suit to that V now. <laughs> no, because like, it's very hard as a kid because you get back, my mom and dad always spoke suit to all of us. So we all could understand suit, but we okay. couldn't speak it. Okay. And for you to try to explain that to a 12 year old that speaks to you in suit and you answer back in English, ah, but uh, we're not cheese boy, we're not, you think you're better than us because you can speak Even English. your English, was it like, Fluent as 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 it is now because I mean no, I'm my English was you fluent. haven't you had an accent an Italian accent no, no, I had I had an dialect. American accent because I went to an American school so oh, we went to American okay. school uh, um American overseas school of Rome mm -hmm. um so I had I'm more of an American a accent than a hey I'm not doing one a diplomat blind blind son and you guys don't get into trouble <laughs> you guys do not not me get into I'm talking trouble. about the older guys <laughs> oh big baby who actually works in the restaurant now. Mm -hmm. um, those guys were the ones that got in trouble. Me, I didn't really get in trouble. Me, I was just my older brother's sibling. I was a cool kid. That's where the name Young Hodge comes from. Okay. Because um, we all went to the same school. Okay. All six of us. And everybody used to forget my name. Gosh, that's just too much. Hey? Yeah. Everybody used to forget my name. So everybody used to be like, yo. Um, and they couldn't say Hodge. They used to say Kodge. Because they couldn't say Hojani. They used to be the Kojanis. Kojani. So my brother's mates and my sister's mates used to actually not my sisters. My sisters were very conservative. My sisters were quiet. They're ladies. And then there's the animals, yeah. which is, uh, which is the boys. <laughs> <laughs> so all my brother's mates used to be like, Hey, Oh, young coach, where your brother at? Mm. And that's where the name came from. I'm like, yo, my name's Alex. Like he could use the name, Alex, use my soupy, use soups, anything. I'm not young coach, mm. but now it's stuck. That's my name. Mm -hmm. Even on, on Instagram, is young coach. That's what I'm saying. I'm just like, oh, okay. So, yeah. And I, I got a, line, a tongue lashing this morning for from who? You. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, uh, I get it right. Get it right. Get it right. Yeah. So now, like moving back, if you had to, if you had to describe mm. your childhood, mm. maybe let's let's look at from. Your time, your time in Rome, mm. your period, you know, the time spent in Rome, mm. how would you best describe it? And what were the lessons you learned that you could, that you still use today? If Guys, I always, I'm going to go back and I'm, and I know my answer always sounds so boring, but I, I, all my learnings, I, I honestly believe all my learning started at 14 for me. Mm -hmm. um, so Italy for me was literally being at home, going to school, going to a friend's house and coming back and going on school trips. Every other learning, I learned how to drive a car here in South Africa. Mm -hmm. um, went on my first date with a girl in South Africa. So the only learning from Italy I got was a different language. Okay. Um, as opposed to popular belief, I learned how to cook in Durban. Um, when I went to Varsity in Durban. Yeah. yeah. So... I lost my dad at 18 at a very young age. And then um, to keep up with the lifestyle I was used to, I started waitering because I was the only job in the world um, in Durban um, that you didn't need a qualification for. And I started waitering for a guy by the name of Marco Conti, who still has a restaurant in Mshanga today called Marco's. Like, and he's still one of my best mates. Um, so the restaurant game I learned in Durban 
and I learned from my guy by the name of Marco Conti and his mom, uh, Luciana. Luciana joined the, had, had been with Marco for a while and I was too loud, to be honest. I was yeah. still like, don't, 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 yeah. Don't agree so quickly. But I mean, <laughs> anyone who's met you, just, you can hear you coming. Yeah, yeah. You so I was, I was too coming. loud in the front of house. Marco was like, listen, my mom's in the kitchen, bro. I need you to go learn how to cook. I, I need you to go hang out with my mom in the kitchen. And three years later, because you're disturbing the peace. Because you're disturbing the peace. You got these white folk <laughs> here in their suits, and there's this black kid just running around here making a lot of noise. And, mm-hmm. and in those days in Durban, there was not in the only. I was the only black waiter in private restaurants, non-franchise restaurants. Um, so that's where that's where my learnings of being a restaurateur came from. Everything I do, eighty percent of what I do. Mm-hmm. And the loud and the running around the restaurant and giving customers showed up. That's all Marco Conti. I learned that from that old man, that old bald man. He hates me calling him bald, but like, yeah, that's why I learned everything I know. Um, as far as running a restaurant and restaurant structures, I learned from another brand called Kokake Pizzeria. That's why I moved to Joburg. Mm-hmm. Um, and I learned that from uh, Greg Momsen. Um, yeah. If you had to describe your dad, what a legend. That's it. That's it. My dad was my best friend. Um, I haven't named the new area in the restaurant, Pirinyane Bar. That's actually my dad's name, Pirinyane in Sutu's Little Monster. Um, Piri apparently is a fox. Yes. Um, so um, Pirinyane is a small fox oh, yeah. or a little monster. Um, yo, I always get choked up when I talk about my old man. My old man was, was one of a kind. Bro. My dad was super kind. Um, very quiet. Um, people called him intelligent. I don't, I don't know that side of him. Mm-hmm. I learned to drive because of my dad and my uncle. Um, my uncle JJ, my dad were the guys that taught me how to drive, bro. At the age of 15, I was driving. Um, my dad taught me hard work when other kids, so we got back from Italy. My dad decided to stop buying. He worked for the UN for a little bit. And then he started buying farms, buying and selling farms. And I used to hang out with my dad every day, bro. I used to be in the bike with my dad. I used to drive my dad everywhere. Because as a kid, all you want to do is drive a car. Mm-hmm. Um, when most kids would go to Durban or Cape Town on holiday, I was with my dad on the farm. Um, so my dad was my best mate. Like my dad, my dad gave us everything we have, all six of us. Um, yo, I actually wish he was alive. My dad has missed a lot of big moments in my life, hence, and he was a people's person. Um, hence I named Pirinyane Bao after him. Um Life lessons you've learned? Life lessons I've learned from my dad. Work. You're not going to go anywhere without working. Nobody gives you anything on a silver platter. You got to work. Even if you come from money, you got to work. Like, I've, there's, there's a lot of sad stories about kids that come from a wealthy family and they don't know how to work. They used to be giving stuff. So when it's time to work, they fail. I'm glad you touched on that. Because yeah. for me, it's only now when I was doing my research, I was like, what do you mean Alex's dad is like, was a diplomat? Because yeah. you don't have that persona. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, cheese boy. Yeah, she, you just look, you know, like you're just about yeah. getting your hands, your hands dirty. That's and just what my working. dad taught us. Um, bro, even when we're, when, even when we're, I, I believe we're not, we're, we're wealthy as a family because we just had each other, right? Mm-hmm. Um, my mom comes from five girls, five boys at home. Um, our direct cousins is about 32 of us, 31 of us. Like that's your, that's your immediate cousins. Like my mom's yeah. siblings, kids. Um, and we all worked and my family's actually quite interesting because you have the diplomat kids, which is us. Mm-hmm. And then we have a family that owns taxis. So those guys walk around in guns and <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's your backup. When you say I'm you know, calling I, backup. We literally, and then we have lawyers and then we have farmers in the family and it's mm-hmm. all one family. Um, I remember when we were kids, we used to go to parties and trucks. In horse and trailers, you know the horse itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we're rude, like was, <laughs> and we had each other, right? Yeah. In Lesotho, in Lesotho was horse party, so we used to go there with trucks and park, and nobody was allowed out until we were ready to leave. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I can. I, I'm just hearing boom, meba, but one's like, hey, kima naval, kima naval, neba khushan, hey, banaban, neba molui. No, we're known as banaba molui. Because my mom's maiden surname is Molui. Okay. And she's the one that had five, ten siblings. 
Um, so yeah, we as we I've never been, I've never been a cheese boy, mm-hmm. right? We went to the right schools, but we wrote an essay for everything we wanted. I like that. I everything. really, 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 really everything. like. Like for me, that is something that I when I first got in, introduced to you know the um, like Tepi and Maui Vuntla. Yeah. And I found out that but not! you know Those are my favorite sisters. Those two. <laughs> I, I thought like they would just ask and things would happen. But nah. They were like, no, we had to sit down and no, you write motivate and write a business plan and propose. And I'm like, that is amazing because not only are you teaching your kids the the um, the value of the of a penny, but yeah. business skills as well. Yeah, and uh, back back to business skills. I just think in the black community, we're not. I think our parents teachers to their belief they take us to school that's it that was us yeah and i and i, I still see that now in the yeah. black community no 100% the white community if you start a business little john has a lawyer mm-hmm. and an accountant from day one day one little john's dad old thomas will call his lawyer and be like listen john is starting a, a restaurant or any type of business um, I need you to get a lawyer for him. Mm-hmm. You call his accountant. Do you have a junior accountant in your firm? I need you to be, I need him to be part of John's business. Us, our parents are like, we can just get Good luck. So we'll shop. I guess we And there's a lot of things you don't know about yeah. being an entrepreneur. I made a lot of mistakes. I was in a lot of trouble in 2018. Um, and for me, <sighs> Being an entrepreneur is a lot of work. There was there was this uh, meme going around this week. I was actually talking to my wife about it um, on Instagram and and um, and Twitter about normalizing crying. Yeah, as an entrepreneur. Yeah, an, yeah the Yo. side of the on, of entrepreneurship <gasps> you don't know. No, it gets hard, guys. Like everybody sees the happy guy running around the restaurant. You don't see the hell in the background. You don't see not knowing that you have to pay the vet man. You not knowing you have to pay the tax. You don't know that. Yeah, yeah. Because I never went to school, right? I did my trick. After my trick, uh, I told my parents I was going to varsity. I went to varsity for the first two weeks. Of course. And then came June, first year. My mates were like, are you ready for exams? I'm like, exams? <laughs> <laughs> like, what exams? I was like, dog, it's, like, it's midterm. I'm like, yo, I never went to school. So to be honest, for me, my last learning was my trick. Mm. I've never been to business school. I've never been to hotel school. Everything I know, I've learned from restauranteering, my relationships with people. I think that's my, I always tell people, that's my currency, mm-hmm. is relationships. Which is important. It's I think. very important. And I'm, I'm one of those that don't burn bridges. I'll blow that shit up. Like I'll blow, I'll blow a bridge up. I don't, because I'm never going to need that person again. And yeah. I think that's a Cancerian trait as well. I'm Cancerian. We love you a lot. But when the tables turn, whew, oh, it gets nasty. No, actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cancerians for you. We're uh, the people's champs, but don't get on the other side because then we become uglier than ugly. And what is family? What does family mean to you? <sighs> family is anybody that cares enough about you to take care of you. Okay. Family is not blood. I've learned my lessons about blood. Family is not blood at all. I honestly believe family is people that care about you. I think your siblings. Wait, say that again. I'm writing that. I'm, I, I have a thing of writing down quotes. I can't even remember what I said. Is what it family? I I'm a firm believer in family is people that care enough about you. And family is not blood. It's been proven. I've learned. Um, I have a team of guys I've been working with. I can name them by name. Mm-hmm. I've got a team of guys I've been working with me since 2007 when I moved to Joburg. Um, that are my family. I've got a guy in my kitchen today, um, Pilani. Pilani and I used to work together and learn how to cook pastas in 2003. He's still my secret Italian mom that I pull out the closet. Zulu boy with dreadlocks that doesn't eat meat. He's, a, he's, he's like, that's my heart. Like Pilani is like my brother. I've got Banks on my team. A lot of people don't know Banks. I've got Hardy. Um, I've got Say What, who's a barman. Um, I even get choked up when I think about these guys because I don't think I'd be where I am without these guys. 
Um, and for me, that's what family is. I'll go to war for those guys before a mania family member of mine. So what does what is resilience? When we talk about resilience, what does that mean to you? Because when I said it, you're like, cool, I'm coming. Resilience. <laughs> for me, resilience means I don't think everybody needs to lose at some point. Mm -hmm. Right? You're yeah. gonna lose at some point. Um resilience is accepting that, okay, this was a hiding. This was a loss, but in my head, I always tell people I never lose. Okay. Right. It's a hiding. I'm at a, I'm at, I'm at a low. I'm going to dwell in that low. I'm going to accept the fact that I'm low. I'm going to dwell in it for a little bit. And while I'm dwelling, good luck to you. Cause I'm planning on coming out of it. And when I come out, I come out swinging. Mm -hmm. Um, so for me, that's, that's, that's my explanation to it. I, I believe that you are going to lose, but coming out of the loss that's what builds character that's what shows who you are that's for example with this whole covert thing lockdown one the first one. Oh, that one was heavy yo the first first one the one was for heavy because we i didn't know i loved jamili food like <laughs> I, was, I found myself like mm. yo, it was rough, eh? like something <laughs> for me that first lockdown was amazing i actually got to spend time in my house um my wife and I, my wife, that house, I always say it's my wife's house. I, it's like a hotel for me because I'm never home. And that lockdown, I was home all the time. Actually made me respect my wife a lot more because then I, I saw her work. My wife is a digital strategist. Um, and all I did was cook and clean. And I called one of my mates up one day on a Friday night. <laughs> I called him Sovo up. And, uh, and Sovo and I talk a lot. And I, and I, and I, and I, I called him up and I was like, yo, what you doing? He's like, oh, bro, I'm on the couch. That was a second Friday. And I was on FaceTime with him and I, and I showed, he's like, what are you doing? And I had to show him. Bro, I was putting up washing. <laughs> I was putting up the washing. My wife taught me how to use a washing machine. Um, yeah, lockdown for me was amazing. I enjoyed being at home. Mm -hmm. The hardest part of lockdown was my team for me. Um, I, I, I Every time I call them, hearing their voices and them being that low hurt me because that's like my family. Yeah. And as soon as the president let us do takeaways, I remember I had a meeting with my board, um, the chair of my board being Andy Lekuma, arguably him and a guy by the name of Tabiso Hamanes are the two people that saved Jamili. Without those two men, Jamili would have never made it, ever. From 2018, Jamili would have not made it. Um, and I called them up and I listened to everything they say. And I called them up and I was like, guys, so the president is letting us open for takeaways. Andide is like, chief, your business is not a takeaway business. You sure you're going to make it? I'm like, Andide, I don't know if I'm going to make it. All I know is that our product is great. And all I know is that I got my team sitting at home. I cannot have those men looking at their families in the eyes and saying, I'm chilling at home. Meanwhile, yeah. there's me with Major and Troy and my two French Bulldogs and my wife chilling on the couch. These men are sitting there looking at their kids and, and wives in their faces and they're not providing. Yeah. I wanted to be able to be like, let's go to war. I call my team, the essentials of my team. I was like, guys, let's open for takeaway. If we fail, we fail. But at least you know, yeah. we tried. Yeah. Um, and that was that was the resilience of the brand. That's when I realized the power. I've always known Jamie's a great brand. Mm -hmm. Um, whenever people say your food is amazing, I'm like, yeah, it's great. I know my food is good. Yeah. The true what made me believe, I believe in my brand. Mm -hmm. what made me believe in the Jamili brand was when we started doing takeaways and we were busy from day one when BMW jumped on board and was like listen we'll do deliveries for you when Avis called us up was like yo I hear you're doing deliveries our cars are sitting can we do deliveries for you I'm like yeah let's go that's what made me what warmed my heart and just to see my team go from managers to Oaks that were stapling shit they were placing orders via um pen and paper, Oaks, were, Oaks that our managers were cleaning toilets. And that's when I was like, shit, we yeah. actually have a great brand here. And we bounced back. We bounced back and we bounced back big as a family and as a team. And I'm thankful for that. And that's what resilience is to me. Where did it all start though? Like, yes, you started in Durban, but when did you have that aha moment? When did you realize actually... This is I left Durban. I left Durban in two thousand and seven. 
telling myself I'm going to open a restaurant in Joburg in 2009. Um, got here. Not having gone to school, nothing. Zero. Just Street spending time with Mama Zala in the kitchen. <laughs> I was like, now nah, we got this. We got this. Bullshit over matter, guys. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Um, and I told myself 2009, I was going to open a restaurant. I'm going to give myself two years to learn the market in Joburg. I'm going to learn the suppliers. Um, by 2009, I'm going to open a restaurant. Needless to say, that never happened. Um, I was in the restaurant game from 2007 to 2015 in Joburg before I opened my own store. Um, which goes to say, I've always wanted to open a restaurant called Jameli. Yeah. I haven't pitched it for Nickelway. There was a little center called Nickelway opening at some point in my life. Yeah. And I pitched the name Jameli. And the guy that was in charge of the tenant mix, I'm not going to mention his name because he gets a little embarrassed. Um, was like, no disrespect, boy, but you want to open a restaurant called Jameli, an Italian restaurant. You're black. What do you know about Italian food? I'm like, chief, listen to me. I know more Italian than most Italians that live in South Africa today. Yeah. Um, I know how to cook Italian food. I understand Italian food. And he was like, nah, it's not going to happen. So needless to say, that same venue... Where Kokaki Pizzeria is now in Nickelway? Yeah. That was supposed to be Jameli. And I still carried on. And a gentleman by the name of Jeremy Ord, I, dis- I met him in 2014, February. Needless to say, since 2007 to 2015, I'm having meetings with many black men that drive Bentleys and Ferraris and mm. they pull up to the meeting and looking all good. And they leave you with a bill. And I'm like, Chief, I'm coming to pitch a restaurant yeah. to you, my brother. Yeah. And you're going to leave me with a two grand bill, like two grand. Like I have 30, 30, 40, 50,000 rand saved. That's all I have. But you want me to pay three grand for this bill, but you're going to pull up in a Bentley. And then you're going to give me some bullshit story about how we should meet next week and the week after and the week after. Yeah. And you know, my pedigree, you know who I am, you know who my brothers are and they've done very well for themselves. You know who my sister is. She's done very well for herself. My other sister's done very, you know us. Yeah. Just give me the money. I got this. Never happened until a gentleman by the name of Jeremy Ord that owns Dimension Data. I met him in February 2014 when I was still running a little restaurant in Branston. Mm -hmm. And he came into a restaurant, had a great meal, and he used to battle to get into that same restaurant because that's how busy the restaurant was at the time. And we swapped numbers one day. And he used to always send me a message saying, I need a table. I used to get him a table. I need a table. I used to get him a table. And then I, I resigned from that restaurant April 12th, 2014, 2015. I met in February 2015, sorry. And I resigned from that restaurant in February, in April 2015. April 14th, 2015, Jeremy calls me. He's like, boy, I need a table. I'm like, Jim, I don't know what to tell you. I don't have a table. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I've left Cafe Dos o. He's like, what do you mean you've left? I'm like, well, I've left. He's like, boy, you don't know it yet, but you're going to mm-hmm. open your own restaurant. When you do, call me. I'm like, listen, old man, tech, I'm going to go bus tables in New York because I was going to leave 10th of July, 2015, because my birthday is on the 8th. Yeah. And I was going to go bus tables in New York. And then Dai Big Baby was like, dog, stop being such a girl. Why are you being so scared? Why, what are you scared of? I don't know who said girls are scared. But I Sorry, I take that back. <laughs> my wife is going to slap me when I get home. <laughs> Holy yeah. shit. Sorry, Google, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> Women are smart and the best thing that's ever happened to mankind. Um, my brother was like, yo, you need to open your own store. What, what are you running from? Mm-hmm. Where, you, where, where are you going? Um, and him and I came up with the name Jameli because Ntai and I look alike. Mm-hmm. And he's like, let's open this thing. June 2015, I called Jeremy. I was like, Jeremy, I'm ready to open my store. He's like, perfect. Come show me the venue. I showed him the venue. We had one meeting. A week later, he put four million rand in my account. A week later. This man met me in February. In June. He put four million right in my account. Mm. My brother gave me a bit more money as well. And we opened Jamili in October. But that money arriving in your bank account, you know how scary yeah. that is? Yeah. You've been talking about this thing, about how great you're going to be. And, and now the money's there. They're like, all right, chief, let's go. So what were the, I mean, during that time, we, it's, 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 it was obviously in your head. Yeah. And I think this way most people battle is we all have dreams. Like everyone will say, I have a dream or whatever. But turning that dream into reality takes a lot of character, scary. takes a lot of, and it, yeah, the closer you get to it, the it's harder scary. it becomes. It's scary. What is it that kept pushing? Like, what was it that made you just believe in yourself 
that extra mile? I knew I was good with people. I knew I had a great product. I knew Joburg didn't have the product I had. It had nothing to do with skin color. It had nothing. My restaurant was 80% Caucasian when I first opened. Mm-hmm. So many 80-20. No, it's changed. It was 80-20 for a long time until I opened Pirinyana Bar. Mm-hmm. Pirinyana Bar was the announcement of there's this young black kid that's opened a restaurant. And there's a little bar. You, you guys come check out the bar. That's where they're not 1%. Because we do have the black community that's the 1%, that yeah. was the 20% of the 80% of yeah. the 100% at the time. Mm-hmm. And that's where everybody started to get to know me as a person because right? they started coming to the bar. And then they're like, oh, shit, this kid can actually cook. And then they started eating and then they started bringing friends. And then, and that's where Jamelia, I believe people found out and knew about Jamelia 2017. Majority yeah. of, the yeah. majority of Gauté. I can believe that, yeah. Um, but... The brand, I knew from day one, I'm like, I know a lot of people. My currency is human beings and relationships. B, I know how to cook and we know how to make, I know how to make good food. Worst case scenario is that we fail. Let's open this thing. Mm-hmm. And we open and back to relationship. I got by the name of Tristan. Most people know him now because he's, he's a big deal in design and restaurant design and mm-hmm. interior design. Um, Tristan was a friend. Of, he, was a stu- he was a kid in high school. In Northcliff, when I was a restaurant manager at Kokaki Pizzeria in Northcliff. When I opened my restaurant, I was like, Tristan, bro, I'm gonna open a restaurant. He's like, I'll design it. And he's like, What do you want your shop to look like? I'm like, I want a New York loft, because that's where I wanted to live. Okay. And I'm like, I want it to look like a New York loft. Hence the the windows, the wooden floors. Mm-hmm. And Tristan did it for almost nothing. And he's like, oh, the way you treated me as a kid and my mates we used to always come to Kokakio, used to always slide us a drink or two, you know? You've always been one of us, I got you. Yeah. And that's how we built Jameli. We built it from just pure Tristan believing in me, um, Jeremy believing in me. Um, and that's all it took. It took Jeremy or to believe in me. Um, and that's what happened. We opened Jameli and the rest is history. This is, this is, is it, I don't think the rest is the history. <laughs> it's literally, it's still happening. It's, it's unfolding, yeah. you know, because I think for people listening, or what it, it's, you see the restaurant, you see the man, yeah, but you never really know. And that's why I have like this kind of show is you never really know the story behind the man. You never really know the try the um, trials and tribulations that he had to face. The fact that you had to pitch, bro. And pitch and pitch Bro, and pitch. You know, I and wish I could never... name people's names. Heads would, would turn. Yeah. Um, a lot of a lot of prominent black businessmen in Gauteng. Yeah. I pitched to. And they just didn't believe. They didn't believe. It's sad. Now do when they come, do they now <laughs> no, that's that's another thing I always say that grace me. That's the grace me. <laughs> it's like the same men now. Hey, give me our name. He's one of us. He's done well. He's a black kid. Hey, yeah. tech. Where were you? I know where you were when yeah. I was pitching. You're like, nigga, you're not gonna make it. But what I think the, then the issue becomes, you know, as 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 black people would were, were trained to, or not trained, but we're more accustomed to success. Like we want the idea of success or the image of success, but right. not really the work. Yeah. The the Crux of yeah. success. Like, yeah. you want I think, to see the finished product. I don't think, like, people know me for five years, right? I've had Germany for five years. That's, 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 that's when Gauteng started to know a guy by the name of Alex Kojani mm-hmm. that owns a restaurant called Germany. There's still people that come there that don't know I own it, which is perfect. Yeah. Because I'm the like guy. It's hard to not know. I'm the clown that's just running around. I'm loud. 100%. That's all I do. I'm loud. I don't do anything there. I'm just running around. I make noise. And so irritate can I see people. The manager? Yeah. yeah. They're like, can I so see the manager? I show them the, banks the and Hardy. <laughs> I've had a customer like, um, can you please call the manager? And then the manager will come with your Hardy or banks. They'll be like, this guy is running around. He's loud, eh? And the, and, the, about, and Hardy and banks will be like, ma'am, I don't know what to tell you, but that guy owns it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the guy that owns a restaurant. So between you and him, who's going to leave here? <laughs> <laughs> Um, Sorry, Karen. <laughs> yeah. So people know the five years. They don't know the 10 years before the five years. Now describe 
take nope. me through the 10 years. Ooh. I'm sure there were times when you sat down and said, okay, it's not happening. Like no. the 10 years is being a waiter, learning how to serve tables, being a cook, being told. Marco had tough love. Eh? Marco was tough love, pure tough love. But Marco, yo, Marco, Marco was, and I still love him like my older brother, but he was the king of, he doesn't give you anything on a silver platter. You got to earn everything in this restaurant. Mm -hmm. Everything. He used to tell me straight. Marco used to be like, you see outside that door? That's South Africa, my son. As soon as you walk in this door, and his name was at the, he's like, look at that name at the, at the top of the door. I'm like, Marco's he's like, welcome to the Republic like of Marco. Like black family. Like <laughs> 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 Back to <laughs> Italians and South Africans are the same. Marcos, yeah. you're like, why don't you walk in this door? Is the Republic of Marcos. And he's, he's, him and my father are the two men that taught me to work. Marco never gave me anything on a silver platter. Marco and I would work, go out that night. And I used to get into every single club in Durban and live the life in Durban because of Marco. I used to go mm -hmm. to the rugby games because the Springboks used to eat at Marcos. And we'd go out, get absolutely pickled. And then the following morning, I'll be late by 20 minutes. And he'll be there before me. Or he'll be at home sleeping and he'll hear I was 20 minutes late. He's like, Chief, you owe me five rand for every minute you're late. I'm like, but Marco, I was out with you. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I don't have to be at home. Yeah. I don't have to be at work at nine. You do. And Marco I taught me. The boss, thank you. <laughs> I, I used that. to party with Marco four nights a week. Boy, did we party. And we, then I got to work. Dog. And you're like, why am I here? And you yeah. call them. And they're like, I'm at home. Yeah. And Marco used to punish me for being late because he's like, you got to work. You know your responsibility in the morning. You should have gone home earlier than me. But Marco, I couldn't go home because you made me stay. Mm -hmm. did, did I tie your hands to the pole? You enjoying the tequilas at the bar? Get to work. Mm -hmm. So same mentality I have today with my team. My team is my family. But work gets done. And if it doesn't get done, there's hell to pay. And they know that. I know that. It hurts my feelings every time I shout at them, but they know it's a, it's, a, it's a must. It's part of the game. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm your boss. I'm your brother. For some people, I'm their uncle. For some of them, I'm like dad. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we got a brand to run, and people don't care what we're going through. Customers, clients don't care yeah. if you're having a bad day, good day. They don't care. They want to come. They want to have a great meal. They want to leave. That's it. In that order. In that order. So even me, I, I, don't, I don't know how to hide my feeling. When I'm having a bad day, you won't see me on the floor. I'll be at the restaurant, but I won't be on the floor because I don't know how to hide my feelings. Um, That's when you're saying it's, it's, to me it's been around for five years because I'm like, surely it's been longer. No, yeah. it's six years in October, actually. October 24th is six years. And how does it feel to now walk into the dream? <sighs> to be honest, to me, it feels like I've had Jameli for three years. For the first, from 20, 2015, October, I opened. So those two months in 2015 don't really count. 2016, 2018 was just a lot of fun. A lot of fun. 20, yo, 2016, 2017 was a party. It was a lot of fun. We, yo. Did we do Cape Town? Was it 2018? 2018. 2018. Um, 2016, 2017, great years. I was not paying the tax, man. It was a mess because I knew nothing about it. Back to being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You open a business, you know your craft. Yeah. I signed contracts I shouldn't have signed because I didn't have a lawyer. I didn't pay the tax, man, because I didn't have an accountant telling me to. And Uncle Sam will find you. Yo, that bride knocked in 2018. <laughs> That's when a man by the name of Tabisa Hermanus was like, Chief, I love you, I got you, but this is beyond me. Because Tabisa joined yeah. the team and Tabisa was trying to fix it and help me out. And then Tabi was like, Chief, we need a we need a smarter man. And he brought Andy down to the onto the onto the team. And Andy I've known forever. When I wanted to open uh Jameli, Andy was one of the guys I approached. Mm -hmm. And Andy was one of the few guys who were like, I approached him, I pitched it to him. The following two days later, he's like, bro, this is too rich for me. It's not what I want to do. He was one of the few black men that were straight with me. Yeah. By day two. Yeah. The rest. Ah, uh, Chief, let's talk next week. Pay this bill. Let's go somewhere. Take me when out. I, to take, uh, I want to know when during that time when now the text man is knocking. Mm. Because, I mean, in my head, I can imagine you're always going to have naysayers. You're always going to have those people who say, nah, 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 no, nah, 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 n
but it's up to you. It was a dark time. You know? It was a dark time. As you said, how you you react. If I didn't have, I repeat, again, if I didn't have Andy Lekumalo, Tabiso Harmonis, and Gugule Tukhojan, my wife, if I didn't have my wife, I would I would not be here today. It was a hard time. It was a dark time. But nobody saw that. You guys saw mm-hmm. Jamedi was pumping. Andy just set me down. Tabiso set me down. They're like, Chief, you're great at your craft. Just carry on with your craft. We'll take care of everything else. And today they have. Today I'm out of trouble. And with 2020. <laughs> with a whole year of oh, no business. Yeah. These two men and the team that runs my restaurant and our restaurant are the people that helped me get out of 2018. Men like Hardy, men like Banks. I've got a girl back office, Abigail. She is, <sighs> Abigail, even when things go bad, she's like, it's going to be okay. I'm like, Abby, she does hit the fan. She's like, yeah, hey, but we'll be fine. In the back of her mind, she knows we're failing. Yeah. But she'll never show me to panic. I'm not a panicker. But when you're facing a barrel of a lot more money than you can count. Yeah. If I didn't have the unit I have, I've got a great unit of people around me. Um, and they let me be me. They let me be the artist. They let me dream big. But they rein me in now. If I didn't have those people, I wouldn't have made it through 2018, to be honest. Okay. So to answer your question, resilience, just have a team around you that make that help you bounce back. That make you believe. I always believe in the product. Yeah. I always say that I don't, I believe in the Jameli product and our product is food. Everything else we built, the atmosphere we built. Customers have made the ramp, the ramp. It wasn't me. <laughs> and it's a ramp. <laughs> People the, oh, the ramp, Jameli, it wasn't me, chief. Yeah. Me, I opened a restaurant in a place where I didn't have to pay a lot of rent. And then there was a ramp. Yeah. And then Oak started pulling up in their new Ferraris. But you know, the, the pressure. Like, yeah, yeah. You're doing no it to yourself. Because the first time I remember you're I doing it to yourself, South Africa. And I'm like in this black Suzuki, and I'm like, <laughs> and the car, guard, like the car guards, obviously, just like, yeah, there's space up top. I'm driving in, and when I drive in, you can feel the eyes are just like. Perignani bar. I repeat, that that bar was not there. Yeah. <laughs> that bar was not there for the first two years of Jamaica. Yeah. yeah. That bar came in 2017, June, July. 2018. That's when the ramp became a thing. A thing, yes. Because the bar is out there now. And the bar is sitting in the car park where people are facing the ramp. Yes, because now it's just like, oh. Right? Mm. That's all it was. It wasn't me. I didn't plan that. Now you have to park your little physique. Yeah, it wasn't part of the business plan. And like, yeah, I didn't pitch to Jeremy. Jeremy, <laughs> listen, I want to open a restaurant and this ramp that people are going to drive up and show each other's cars off. Yeah. It's not part of my plan. I was like, I want to open a family restaurant. Yeah. Everything else was just blessings. As Drake says, blessings on blessings. That's right. Okay. So, as I said to you, the show is centered around um, an autobiography. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, as you know, with, with autobiographies, there's a part, or in a book, there's a section called The Forward. Hold on. Hold on. And I know I shouldn't say this out loud. My wife is going to be like, I can't believe you said that. I've never read an autobiography, so I don't know. Okay. So talk me through it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in, I'm, I'm talking you to it. My yeah. like, I'm talking yeah. you through it. So the forward mm-hmm. is normally a motivation, a letter of someone from somebody who's read the transcript of the manuscript mm-hmm. of the book right. before it gets published. And then they get a chance to just give a testimony to say, I know this person or whatever's here is true or whatever like that. Right, right, right. right. And we've gotten to that point of the show where I play you, your forward, right? Right. And we, we t- we'll talk about that. So I've, okay. I managed to get someone. What? And this is your forward. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you managed to get somebody to do what? To... Give a testimony to talk about you. So this is your forward. This is what I'm saying. This just listen. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sorry. 
The Forward. Hello, guys. Um, I'm in Sovo, in Sovo Mashaba, and I'm right now in Sovo. And I am I'm a good friend to Alex, and I'd like to think he's a great friend to me. Um, I consider Alex to be somewhat of a big brother to me, um, a confidant, and one of my closest friends. Uh, to, you know. And when we're talking about Alessandro with regards to resilience, I think he completely, completely embodies that character trait. You know, he's made up of resilience. I've known Alessandro's journey from when he was a waiter in Durban to where he's at now. Um, as a restauranteur, as a businessman and an entrepreneur, you know, uh, and I believe that he is where he is today purely because of the resilience that he has in him as a businessman, entrepreneur and restauranteur. Um, he's, there's been times where I myself as a businessman have found myself quite low and I don't know what to do and I confided in him and, you know, he gave me such incredible words of encouragement that that really helped me pull my socks up, refocus, rethink, and zone back into my business. You know, he told me that, you know, sometimes as a businessman, there's nobody else who's going to pull your socks up for you. You got to, you got to be resilient for yourself. There's nobody who's going to do it for you. You know? So I think all in all, he's, he's the epitome of resilience. And we see it today um, in his work, you know, uh, fortunately for us, everything that he does is something that everybody can publicly see, you know, as his success. We all know the success of Jameli, Malaka Coffee, you know, and a few other business ventures which he is behind. Alex has put more people on his feet than a lot of people I know. It's just that it's not my journey or my place to talk about that. But I can tell you today for free, Alex is the epitome of resilience. Keep it up, champ. Family, man. I can't believe <laughs> I can't believe that guy didn't tell me. How did this thing? How did this thing? Where, how do you get a hold of him? I mean, <laughs> ah, Who shit. am I? Oh. Who am I? <laughs> oh, damn. Oh. So how does that feel to hear? Oh. And I'm, I'm, I'm that's how Yo. I got like a bit glad when you mentioned him in the beginning. Yo, like, oh. you're gonna get me teary eyed, my nigga. <laughs> oh shit! Like, yo, guys, yo, yo, yeah, no. I appreciate that, boy. I get teary eyed. Like, I'm someone has seen you go through a lot, dog. Yeah. Yeah. And someone have been through a lot together, bro. Um, like, I always say, I, I honestly believe we're, we should have been birthed by the same mother. Um, those words coming from him are big. They're big. Like, I don't think, yo, yeah, yeah. Now I'm speechless, bro. You made me <laughs> cry. My nigga got me crying in this middle of a studio. This <laughs> thing, all right, all right. No, I appreciate the I words, I'm, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that I have this on camera because uh, I never thought uh, Alex would ever be speechless yo. or just like. No, I appreciate you, boy. Um, yeah, that's one of few people that have seen me go through hell and back. Like, yeah, I'm sure it it, it makes it worth it. Yeah, hearing, yeah, yo. No, I'm done. That's that uh, weekend. <laughs> Uh, do you want to take two? <laughs> no, we're done. <laughs> no. no. Um, my nigga, I appreciate you. Um, yeah, man. That's my little brother, yo. That's I'll go to war for that kid. Like he's yeah. Yeah. Just know that. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. While you <laughs> I mean, I didn't mean to, I didn't want to get you emotional, but it means did something right you don't you know you don't yo. yeah i think the reason why i have this part of this show is that often people wait for you know when someone's deceased to be like oh this 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 and you never really get to hear yeah the impact you have on people's lives or the pe the, the people around you yeah and i wanted to have that incorporated into the show so that you can you know how or who you are in the eyes of other people or the people you value to be close to you. Yeah. And that is, that's beautiful. And seeing by your reaction, it really did <laughs> touch your heart. Yeah, I appreciate that.
uh, at the end of the interview now. Are we we're done? Almost, almost. <laughs> we're almost there. Yeah. No, oh, but now, so if you had to now motivate or if you know talk about if you your your life and you look, you look at your life through resilience right what has been the most consistent thing that comes up pure heart grit and hard work that's it and refuse and, and refusal to fail i refuse to fail what is what is failing to you um you know when you put a puzzle together mm-hmm. and some people you know when you put a puzzle and you can't find that last piece i won't sleep till i find that last piece for me it could take me six years but i will find that piece mm-hmm. um hard work like i don't think people understand what hard work means hard work doesn't mean spending time at the office mm. anybody can spend 12 hours at the office it's what you do with those 12 hours at the office um yeah man it's just pure my daughter my dad taught me to work guys that's all i can like my dad taught me to work marco made me work oh that's deep marco was like you're gonna work for everything you get everything my relationship with you you're gonna work your loyalty i'll know your loyalty not a lot of people are loyal I was, I still am loyal to Marco. Um, Marco taught me loyalty and, lo- and taught me hard work. Many a man tried to pinch me from Marco for a long time. Many a man spoke badly about him. And the way he treated me, I didn't see none of that. Um, there is no such, it's hard. Loyalty and hard work. It's very hard to, I can point at the people I believe in my heart that they're loyal to me. Mm-hmm. Just loyalty and pure grit and pure hard work. And that's what Marco and my father taught me. Okay. We're almost at the end. Now we're at the section where we talk about the gag is. So what the gag is, mm-hmm. is a feature where anything that has been misunderstood or misrepresented about you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is now your part to clear the air so i play the jingle and you go okay the gag is i don't know whatever right. people think i'm hot which I, I can tell you for free no one does it <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> okay let me play the jingle and then you clear the air right and then we're almost at the end right the gag is I'm ready. Yeah. Tell me what the gag is. The gag is for the longest time people thought I was adopted by a white family. I'm not. I've got a black mom actually, and black father. Where did that rumor start? Because actually. of the name Alessandro. Even my even my wife's friends at some point. Coconut Kells, for yeah. example. Because <laughs> <laughs> now you mention I'm like, actually, yes. Lisejo honestly thought. And this is my wife's friend, and I knew her for a while, and mm-hmm. she's known me for a while. She before she actually approached me about it, I knew her for years before that. For the longest time, everybody thought my previous employers had adopted me. A white Italian family adopted me. I was not adopted by a white Italian family, guys. Mm-hmm. I've got Matabo Khojane, the Pirignano Khojane's parents. That's the gag. That's okay. the biggest one for me. And I mean, thanks. You literally cleared it out very clear okay alex thank you so much for joining us Pleasure. um and for coming in and agreeing i want to know how you got Ntsova to how Ntsova does not do interviews a he doesn't do this shit at all for a while i was told you don't do this thing these things i did it because of you <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you have a way. No, but my thing is that you mentioned it. Right. Relationships You're are right. very important. That's the currency. You're right. You know, treat people with respect and they show up. You're right. So you won't, you know that we'll talk off air of how how hard it was getting you. Yeah. Because it was like, uh, Alex, uh, you know. But I was like, I was determined. And I was like, 
this is what I want and this is who I want to have a conversation with. So it's over. You made me cry, dog. That's not that's not cool. That's not cool, dog. I have it on tape. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm gonna change. I was with him yesterday. I'm literally gonna change. I was with him yesterday. I was on the phone with him this morning. Like, and so when I, dog, I'm with that guy. Most <laughs> dog, dog, I'm upset. Dog, I'm upset. Yo, I can't believe you didn't tell me. You should have told me, dog. But I mean, the the brief was no one needs to know. Wow, See? that is the brief. No That's one needs to know until it's aired. Until it's time. Okay. Yeah. Last part. Last feature. From my lips to your ears, mm -hmm. um, this is where you impart some knowledge, <clears throat> words of wisdom from um, Alessandro mm -hmm. Supi. Oh, mm -hmm. Although you've already part, I mean, I like this quote actually, the, the family one. Mm -hmm. Something, give me something, something about you. If you had to, okay, now this is you writing the last chapter of your book like the conclusion the last bit what would you want people to say or know about you okay okay what I I'm playing the jingle from my lips to your ears okay what I would like people to know about me I'm a hardworking, pretty, I believe, pretty honest. I try to be as honest as humanly possible. I never want to walk out of any discussion or deal knowing I've won and the other person's lost. We both walk out of that losers or we both walk out of that winners. Um, if you're in my corner, nobody's going to touch you ever with me alive that's it that's all i want people to know about me and i'm a fucking hard worker <laughs> i'm a hard worker that's all okay um with that said mm -hmm. i want to again thank you for coming and joining and agreeing to have this conversation with me and i can't believe you made input. me do this but it was great. I feel like, you know, good. we opened a whole, there's a whole new Alex people did not Yo, know exist. You took me on a journey. And I think it's important, like once in a while to sit down and, because we get consumed with working and working and mm. working that we take, we don't take time to take stock. Yeah. Like, this is what I've done. I've really did this. And this is where you are. I mean. Yo, it's scary. It's not scary. It's, pff, thank you. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Yo, okay. you got me speechless. It's hard, huh? <laughs> I'm taking that one to the bank. <laughs> Definitely taking that one to the bank. With that said, um, thank you so much, Alex, for coming and all of the best with you, your business, and everything that is related to you. Um, hopefully we'll have another part two, three, four. No. no. You haven't I haven't even finished my statement. No. It's so well. You're in shit, dog. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, yeah, thanks for tuning in. You're still um, tuned into the transcript, and that was the conversation on the spirit of resilience with Alex. Alex. Please. Okay. Oh, musubi. Musubi for Chinese. From me, it's Yama Bursani. Thank you so much. Be good or be good at it. Moment, you are creating an impression. Make sure it's an impression by design. This is the transcript with Siamo. Your media, where you are.